Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to do a firmware upgrade on the X series IDS alarm system. Okay, what you can see in the video now is the circuit board. What you will need is, well, obviously an X series panel. Then the cable I'm going to show you now. This is a USB panel interface cable which you get from IDS. If you look on the one side, you can see it's got a serial interface and it converts it to USB. You can see there's the USB side over there. You will need a laptop and you will need the IDS software. I'm going to now demonstrate how to do this. Okay, you need to connect this serial cable to the IDS panel. Now, you've got to plug it in at the top here like this. Right, now what you'll notice is the red light, I mean, sorry, the red line here is closer to the heatsink. Then there's a jumper here. You need to remove the jumper, if there is one there, on J1 and put it on to J3. Jumper is now on J3. Now I'm going to show you on the computer. Right, so you'll need the IDS Swift software. The password is admin unless you've changed it and you launch the IDS Swift. Right. Now, if you already have um, profiles here, you can open them. Now, you can see that I already have profiles here and I want to firstly download the current settings from the panel because I do not want to lose the additional settings that were made manually outside of IDS Swift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the panel. Uh, now this happens, this is the name of the panel. And there you can see the firmware and it was last updated over a year ago. So I'm going to just load this uh, panel. Right, I'm loading the panel information and immediately I'm going to say connect. And the COM port, uh, th this is quite important. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you uh, how this thing works. You go to my PC and then you see so you right click it and you say manage and you should go to the device manager and here you will see ports, COM and LPT. Now there you can see the IDS USB download station which is the uh, serial to USB converter which we need to configure the IDS64 panels. Now what you can do is you save properties and then you'll see the port settings and I can see that the Port settings have already been set. There they are. And most important is, can you see it says they're COM4. So I know that it's sitting on COM port 4. So that stops me from having to go through all these ports, 1, 2, 3. Because if you go through the port and it's not correct, you'll see that it'll say opening COM port, opening port, and then... As you can see, it'll say could not authenticate. Right, so now let's just go to, uh, sorry, now let's reconnect to the panel and let's go to COM port 4, which should work immediately, and let's say connect. Right, so now it is connected. You can see all these things have lit, lit up properly. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say receive. And the reason why I say receive full is I don't want to overwrite any of the manual configuring that was done. Some locations, maybe the user made some changes or added some remotes or whatever it is so therefore i'm quickly um getting that information and i'm going to resave it as a new date and thereafter i will do the firmware upgrade right so now i have the updated version of the panel and uh, when i say updated i mean it's got the latest configuration of the zone names maybe they change things and as i said so now it is i've saved it and now I want to go through and do the um, firmware upgrade. So this is how we do it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new user. And let's put the date. It's so a 5 Jan 2018 firmware I'm going to put there, right, client name. I'm just going to put um, the configure panel type. It's x64 firmware version 2.6 whatever. And this is also giving you a little uh, idea on how to actually set up a client if you um, do this for your first time. 
Okay, here we go. It's done. I'm now going to uh, open. And now you can see in my list I have, there was uh, Sprawly, where was Sprawly Final, there it is. Uh, that was the the one, whoops, let's just uh, fix that. So you can see that this was the last date that anything was done. And now I've made a new one because I don't want to enter, just in case I need to roll back, if you know what I mean. If you know about computers, you'll know what I mean by rolling back. So here we go. So I'm now going to retrieve it into this new profile called Sprightly 5 January, and I'm going to open it. I'm going to say retrieve. I'll go first, let me connect to the panel, connect, and I'm going to say receive, full. Right, so what I've done now, effectively, is I've got two of the same profile with different names or kind of two profiles with the same uh, information in just with different names so that just in case the firmware doesn't work nicely I can always revert back to an earlier um, profile so there we go so now the one I'm using for the firmware upgrade is the one that's dated 5 January as you can see there it's written there so this is the one I'm going to play with just in case there's a boo-boo Right, now it says Tools, Panel Actions, and there's the option for Firmware Upgrade. Right, so I can see that I've can been um, able to connect to the panel. I have the correct firmware. Remember, if your firmware isn't correct, you're going to have problems. You have to match the firmware from the uh, IDS Swift to the panel. And that's why I, I set it up and I went to the keypad and I saw that it was on 2.6. So when I created this profile, I selected 2.6x. Right. It's a good idea to determine the firmware of your uh, panel. So you can just press the star key and thereafter press it again so it's first press and hold thereafter press you can see the firmware is 2.62 okay now we want to do the firmware upgrade you need to disconnect you see if you don't disconnect what will happen is you'll see or if you have a look here the upgrade firmware is not an option okay so we're going to say uh, oops whoops 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 so now we we've uh, we've disconnected it's already been disconnected and now i'm going to go to panel Actions and I say upgrade firmware. Now it says here connect to panel. Yes, so now it's in the mode of firmware upgrade. Can you see how it brought up this bootloader firmware window? Only once I had selected the connect firmware once before the panel was connected. Right, so now I'm going to go and find that firmware. I've stored it somewhere. Let's go and have a look. Uh, one round, let's see, IDS 2.71. There it is. Yes, that's when I, okay, so you'll get this from IDS's website, it's an ENC file, and I'm opening it, and now, let's go for it. Whoops. Okay, so it's asking me to reset the panel. As you can see there, so I will do that now. To reset the panel, you need to boot up and press the uh, default button at the same time. Okay. Okay, so you can see that once I defaulted the panel, it now allowed me to do the firmware upgrade. Okay, while this is loading, I just want to make a comment that, uh, just a reminder, it did not work initially. You saw the error that came out. It said reset panel. So I did default the panel, so it would not work. I did restart my 
my laptop. I closed the software down, opened it, checked that I had the right files. Everything was in order, but the issue was the panel was giving an error and it wanted to be reset. So I defaulted the panel by pressing down the default button while the power was off. The uh, AC and battery power connectors were disconnected. And then what I did is I pressed the default button, powered on the AC uh, power supply and then connected the battery then i then initiated the firmware upgrade and as you can see it is now working now while you are doing the uh, update you can see how the keyboard or well, the keypad is saying version number 2.02 busy so you will get that the key the alarm is unusable for this time now online on IDS's website, they've got a brief video on how to do this firmware update. Now, I've watched the video, and what they say is that after you've done the bootloading, sorry, after you've done the uh, firmware upgrade, they say you should default the panel once again. Once the upgrade is complete, remove J3 and default the panel. Right, so you can see the bootload status, it's com it's complete. So now we are now complete. And uh, you can see it doesn't allow you to do anything. Uh, you literally have to close. It literally locks up here for some reason. So I'm going to unplug the USB. Okay, so the software now becomes a bit useless. As you can see, I can't do anything now. Um, I literally have to right-click it and close the window. Oh, now we say, okay, bootload was successful. To complete the panel firmware, please devote the panel to its factory settings by following the following steps. Power down the panel, remove the bootload jumper J3 from the panel. Press and hold the default switch on the panel while powering up the panel. Release the default and the panel LEDs begin to flash. After approximately 20 seconds, you can see the keypad LCD and um, uh, the keypads will be unregistered again. Right, so I can say close. I'm now going to default the panel. Okay, so having a look at the keypad, you can see that it says version number 2002. This is the version of the keypad software, just by the way, not the version of the panel, and it says unregistered. So what you'd have to do now is go and register each one of these keypads. So I'm just going to register this uh, first one, and um, uh, there we go. And I just want to check the firmware version pressing and hold the star key followed by pressing it one more time and then you can see there's the firmware was a successful it is now 2.71 but now what we need to do is we need to get all the settings back onto the unit so now what I'm going to try to do is load up the the um, uh, settings from the earlier version okay so what I'm going to do now is I want to try and load or actually um, dump all these settings that were from the earlier client so I don't have to reprogram all the 60 odd zones here and I know that the version I had before was correct but you can see now the panel version is wrong so what I'll need to do now is edit the client and change the the panel version but now you can see it's not actually giving me that option to to actually change that panel version so uh, let's just try and connect and see what happens. Let's just check one more time. Firmware version, see there's nothing after 2.6 here, so it's not allowing me. Uh, but anyway, let's just try and connect.
Okay, so still no play there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to install the latest software. So this is IDS Swift 2.7, 2.2.7, and maybe that will improve. Uh, Okay, let's have a look at the new updated version. Let's see if we can edit the client. There we go. So in order to solve this problem, you'll have to update the software to 2.27 because there you can see the firmware version is listed there where is in, whereas the, ver the older version of IDS Swift did not. So if you want to dump the information back without spending all the time manually, uh, <laughs> configuring, then this is the, hopefully the solution, right? Let's just do that. Changing firmware version requires that the currently open client be closed. Any other loss do you want to continue? Uh, okay. Okay. And let's see. Did it do anything? Yes, it did. What it did is it converted the firmware. You see, that was the uh, the account reference was probably final. And now this was 2.6 and now it says 2.7. So let's just see if the settings are still there. Please, can they still be there? Uh, yes, they are. So there are the settings still there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to connect to the panel. And yes, it's connecting. Yes, that's good news. Right. So these are the original settings. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to now say send full. So now I'm going to literally override the panel. Whatever stored in the panel, and this saves a lot of time, especially on large installations. But the key here is if you're upgrading a firmware higher than the software supports, and when I say software, I mean IDS Swift, you will need to use the latest software, otherwise you won't find the firmware in the list of options. Uh, just a reminder, the reason why I'm doing this is that the panel was defaulted, remember? So once the panel was defaulted, it's uh, it's got no settings in. So I would have had to manually go through each zone, uh, set all the names, the uh, partitions, and blah, 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 blah. So this is the reason why I'm dumping the uh, all the settings back on the panel so that I don't have to manually do it. Remember, the panel was defaulted. Right, so there we go. It is now complete, and that is how you upgrade the firmware without losing any of the settings. Thanks for watching.